Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link, this week at the round table of dim lighting, Woo! that's right. We're back in our zone, we're back at the at the table, a li- sitting a little further apart. You know, when we, were sitting, when we were at the other house. Too close. A little too close, a little too close. I mean, we're not six feet apart, but that's because me and you are a pod. We're, we're never six feet apart, we, we let's don't, be honest. We're not, we don't practice social distancing between the two of us, but this is a slightly more social distance. We are, we are a partnership of creativity. Right. A pod. And that's why we're, that's why we're here. We're a creative pod who does a podcast. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're gonna discuss our relationship with board games. Oh, I thought you were gonna stop at relationship. So many others thought the same thing. I'm sure we'll talk about our relationship. And there's a number of relationships that are impacted by this board game conversation. If you don't like board games, this podcast is for you. And if you do like board games, this podcast is also for you. And yeah. if you're indifferent to board games and you have sort of a, I mean, yeah, I'll take it if somebody offers a relationship with board games, this podcast is for you. And by this podcast, we mean this episode. And and the whole show. Yeah. Is a podcast episode a podcast? It's an episode. Uh, I, I gotta ask you another question because uh, I didn't know the answer to that one. I just wanna sweep it under the rug. Are you having ant problems at your house? It is so hot. I mean, California is freaking burning. It is, it is, it's sad. Like I've I've looked at, it's and it's so hot. Like last week, it was record breaking temperatures mm. in our zone, like 105 degree days. And that's the interesting Just, thing that we discovered I, about California that we didn't know until we moved here. You know, back in North Carolina. September rolls around and yeah, it's still hot, but it's starting to change. It's starting to say, okay, 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 enough already. Yeah, creeping but, up on fall. But in Southern California, September is like, we just getting started, y'all. It's, it's, I remember the first year we moved here. August, September is really hot, typically. Yeah, I remember it being 115 degrees in October in yeah. Burbank. And I was like, uh, I didn't, I didn't think this is what it was supposed to be. So yeah, it's super hot. There's, but it's hotter the fires than normal. Are everywhere. And I think that's why, like, all of these insects are now inside of my house. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's hot when it's too hot for an insect. I mean, can an insect? They're used to a hundred degree temperature. They can do that. They have an exoskeleton. Apparently, apparently, they're sensitive when it gets to that temperature because I think that is the reason. There's just, like I looked at in Jade's dog bowl and I went over there because I knew there was still food in it and but she was like, she was like, she'd bark and she'd look at me and I was like, you're, you're asking for food but you've already got food. Well you know where this is going, I walk over there, there's more ants in the bowl than there is food. And she doesn't, she's not, ants are not on the menu. menu. Um, she did not want to eat the ants, so I like I clean out the whole bowl, and then Christy starts. Sp- she found this spray. I didn't even know we had it. Oh, we got lots of sprays because we we deal with this. What we all the time? We got. I mean, I got natural sprays that don't actually harm the humans and the pets. Mm-hmm. And then when things get real bad, all bets are off, and we harm everyone, including us. With well, I'm unnatural a, yeah, sprays. She let loose with this spray. I mean, I I'm totally relocated Jade's bowl to somewhere else because I know that these ants are talking to each other because yeah, there's a whole pheromones. there's a whole line of ants. They like make a trail. Trail of scent. And then it's it's going up and it's going like through some, there's no hole next to the window, but somehow. Oh, they don't need a hole. They don't need a hole, they're just coming in. I think they, they can just talk about teleportation. It's like they, they copper they, it. They're the ones who know how to teleport. Yeah, they copper it right through the wall sometimes. This morning, I went back into my bathroom to uh, take a shower and brush my teeth and get ready to come in here. I appreciate you doing that, by the way. Hey. You know, keeping up with yeah. regular hygiene. Just, just fr- keeping it fresh. I mean, I'm still shaving and everything. You yeah, know? I'm shaving under my beard and right on, on my cheeks where there's some weird hairs that grow up above the line. Oh, really? You yeah. wanna have that eyebrow to beard connection happening? <laughs> what does it, I don't think that would ever happen. <laughs> I think that but would I have happen a cup, for me. I have a couple of, 
hairs that are like, should we should we see if we could go up higher on the yeah, face? Yeah, yeah. It's and like, I'm like no, you can't. Those hairs are like the first ants that are like, whoa. They're frontiers. It's, it's cooler in here. There's dog food. I'm gonna excrete some sort of path, or maybe they just walk back. And but I my thing is if I get every ant that's here and I corral them all together and then I spray them and mop them up and like throw them in the trash can, there's no then there's none to go back and communicate. But am I just am I getting them confused with bees and is it some pheromone trail that they're dropping because I'm also spraying that. I think I got it covered. But my point is I went back upstairs, you know, I get up, I mosey downstairs, I drink my coffee, I do some meditating, do some exercising, I I eat my, drink my breakfast. Then I come back upstairs and I get ready, right? Brush my teeth, take a shower. It was at that point this morning that I looked on my bathroom counter. And this is the second floor of my house. Yeah. This is I mean there's never any food up here. You don't do uh, bedroom eating? Never. Never. As a policy? We just don't. There's never any food upstairs in our bedroom. Not like a secret chocolate stash or anything? No, no secret, you got a secret chocolate stash? Yeah, because I got chocolate in my. You got night chocolate? Yeah, yeah, I'm like a, I'm like a middle-aged woman reading a romance novel. I got dark chocolate bars in my bedside table uh, because. Well, you better watch out because the, the kids are man, gonna find the it. The kids. You got a, you got a kid-free stash. Yeah, they, they'll find the chocolate. And yes, it is safe for my dog. I understand that it's deadly to dogs, but Barbara cannot get in there and she's she doesn't never open tried. drawers. She's never tried. I go back up there and then right there on my kitchen counter where I left it, like I do every morning, is my grinder. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Your grinder? My my teeth insert thingy that, that keeps you from grinding. Keeps my teeth from grinding. I would call that a other. mouth guard and not a grinder. A mouth people guard. People could get confused. I call it my grinder because it I grind it instead of grinding my teeth against each other. Well, it's easy to you know same number of syllables and also doesn't lead people to you know incorrect conclusions. Just call it a mouth guard. And you'll seem like Steph Curry. You know where this is going. Ants all over my grinder. A bunch of them. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I, I'm rinsing off the mouthpiece and I'm 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 getting all these ants to go down in the flood of my sink and I'm you Do you know, feel bad and in I'm that raking moment? them in there. Do you I'm feel like, bad in that moment that what? they're that they're all drowning? Uh no, I'm angry. I'm like, I this 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 has got to stop. Do you take pleasure in murdering them? No. So I, I guess the thought does cross my mind. Because I do. It's like what are they, are they feeling? I know they're not feeling anything. Christy walks in at that moment and, and I was like, look at this. She's like, God, why are they on that? And I'm like, because it's like my, my spit. I mean, they wanna eat my di spit. It's different. They, they will, ants will congregate around, it isn't just food sources or sugar Sometimes it's electronics, like there's something about the vibration oh, really? of a certain like. Well, based on. They'll find a walkie talkie and they'll get on that. Based on the mouthpiece, I'm, I'm, if I lay still enough in my bed, am I gonna wake up with a mouth full of ants? Possibly. Is that how bad things Overtime. have gotten? You'd probably have to die first, or at least be rendered unconscious for a long period of time. Also rats can eat your toes when you're, when you're unconscious, or your nose. If so you have a rat problem. So do you have ants crawling all over your house? Uh, it's funny because we started noticing ants earlier in the summer. Um, and like, you know, we've got the, the driveway that's got like the white wall on one side. And so very often as I'm kind of leaving the drive, you know, leaving during the, the morning or walking up and down the driveway, there's all kinds of trails that they will create on that wall. And you can see it. And, and so that's when I'm like, oh, they're active again. Uh, I've tried so many different things. Oh, excuse me. I, I, for some reason, I picked up a Dr. Pepper on the other side, and I'm drinking it. And the other side, the I mean, other I, side, you crossed over. <laughs> and how do we know? Because you I came almost, back with a Dr. I Pepper. I almost died and came back. The other side of the building is what I meant. <laughs> uh, but um, I thought that this year they were going to be worse because I started seeing them earlier. And they, and one morning, 
uh, Shepard was like, Dad, there's all kinds of ants in the guest bathroom. Um, but it hasn't been that bad, but the thing that we've noticed is spiders. Mm, spiders too, yeah. And flies. The other night. Flies? Before we got ready to eat dinner, um, Jesse had left the door open for Barbara to go out. And she left it open for too long. I, you know what, I have seen a few flies in my house, I take that back. So we're getting ready to eat dinner and Jesse's like, could you kill some of those flies? Cause she knows me, I'm the, I'm the fly assassin. She, she knows I take a certain amount of pride in my work and you know my technique, but slapping above them and trapping them. and You anticipate their exit. And, and they exit right into my hands. And you slap right at that spot. Now, I proceeded to, before we eat, in approximately a 12 minute period, murder seven flies in my kitchen. And there were still three flying around. There was a total of 10 that we found in the kitchen. Oh wow. Now, and Jesse was like, what is happening? I was like, it's so hot. Yeah. They, they feel that AC coming out and they're like, ooh, it's nice in there. And they come in there. Now. I bet somebody's got a mouthpiece. To get back to this, what I begin to do, and it really upsets my wife and I don't quite understand it. I begin to talk junk to the flies. And so what I'm doing is I like I take a couple of them out like the fat ones that are easy and slow. And then we start getting down to the nimble ones. What are the fat ones full of? Life. I think they've just been around. I, I think there's a life blood, cycle. But that that would be a, a mosquito. mosquito. I don't know how long flies are alive. Uh I can't it can't be more than a few weeks, right? And I think that those big ass flies are at the end of their life cycle and they kind of they go into they go inside somewhere and they get slow and they become easy targets. But when it gets down to those last three or four flies and they're smaller and they're more nimble, I begin to say, ha, 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 you've made it this far. You think you're out of the woods. You've seen your comrades go down one by one. You say this out loud? Yes, I begin to speak to them. I think you're, okay. And I say, here's the thing. These, my friends, are your last moments on earth. Make the most of it. And Jesse's like, please shut up. She's like, don't talk that way. It makes me feel bad about the flies. You're like a. I'm like, you're the one who asked me to kill them, woman. You're a bloodlusting zealot, despot. I think it's the fact that I don't believe in doing harm to living beings in general, and especially ones that can like comprehend the difference between life and death or pain and not, not pain, and it's not just a stimulus, you know? Well, let's just say mammals. You don't like to kill a mammal, right? right? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do not like to kill a mammal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like the idea of mammals getting killed. Yes, I'm a meat eater, yes, it's hypocritical. We'll get to that in 10 years. Okay, uh, but, <laughs> but back okay, to- mark your calendar. <laughs> don't worry, we'll get to it. But, uh, with flies, you're an it, easy target. It feels like I can take a little bit of my aggression out. I mean, everybody's got aggression. You kind of need to deal with it in some way. And I feel like I bite a pillow. Yeah, and the pillow, the, the pillow can't die. I mean, what I, happens? I grind on my grinder. When I slap the hell out of that fly, and he dies, and I throw him in the trash, I'm like, I, I just did something. Mm. I mean, that fly was going to be alive for another week, maybe. Did you feel better? Yeah, I do, and I, but my wife makes me think a little too much about it. She's like, I don't like it when you start talking to them like that. And I'm like, but I, I do. It, you could just leave the room and let me talk junk to the flies. The weird thing is that. I'm the I mean, lord of the flies. They don't think about it, they can't communicate, and, the, you know, and they don't have emotions associated with being slap murdered. So the disturbing part is that you're like kind of, term. you're putting the things on them that might deter others from then killing them, but you're like, you're slathering that on them. Hey, feel this. Think about what I'm about to do yeah, to I'm you. talking to them like I'm killing humans. Right. Because As, it seems more substantial. It's, it, that's why it's troubling. Let me just, okay, I'm, it, gonna, so, I'm gonna tell and you. And I'm on Jesse's side. Okay, can I take one additional little tangent? You're gonna, I don't know what you're gonna think about this idea, but, Last night, we were watching the most recent season of. If you're gonna say that you then eat the flies, <laughs> no, 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 I don't no. wanna hear it. Last night, we were, uh, I'm just trying, this is my, I'm, is this opening, another reality I'm TV? opening my mind and my heart to you and to you. Okay. You know, and I know being vulnerable can get you in trouble, but I'm going for it, okay? So, I was watching the latest season of Married at First Sight uh, with Jesse, and 
I don't like the people this season. I like them less than I didn't like the people last season or I hate them more than I hated the people last season. I actually started liking some of the people in the previous season but I don't like any of these couples yet, right? And there's five couples for the first time ever, five. So so you're talking about killing them, what, I get it. What, no, what, no, what I told Jesse is I was like, what do you think in, in the future I think there might be a feature where you get so upset with the characters on a reality show that you can like press a command into the device that you're watching and they'll like die on screen just for your own personal satisfaction. <laughs> and they won't be a part of the show anymore. Like it'll, that level of interaction, but they don't really die. It's just like it's just like a it's first like a first person shooter, but it's the show that you're watching. You're like, I hate that character so much, or I hate this couple. And you press a button and they both go, Aah! and they fall down and die on the show. And I was like, I know that's demented, but I hate this one couple in particular. It cringe, made me cringe so hard that I, I, I wanna hurt them. And I know that's wrong, but if I see it as just the thing that's happening in media, like in video games, and it's not real, it's all just portrayed and acted, yeah. it feels like it would be okay. Bring this to your therapist. <laughs> and then once. But what do you think about that feature? It could, it could, maybe it's just, you could tickle the characters. Logistically, it doesn't work. No, but on, but no, no, in the future they can do anything. If it was like on a touch screen. You're not the only one watching that show, you can, is what I'm saying. Yeah, but your feed is your feed and you tickle the person, they laugh on your feed. It's interactive, it's okay. personalized. Listen, but and you poke them hard enough, it's like a voodoo doll and they get hurt. So you want to have personalized VR, basically it's, it's well it's, it's a personalized reality show. Yeah, that I can interact with. I can it's hurt, like hurt a video characters. game. It's like a it's a video game, yes. It's a video game, but it's a reality show. I think this is gonna happen. But but where you were just going with the VR, I think a VR game in which you're in a kitchen and you're killing flies with your two VR hands. That's just that's, that's just a phone app. Well, I guess no. Yeah, you the, gotta be VR. You gotta have the I'm gloves. Make, I'm gonna make that game. Fly, fly assassin, fly assassin's creed. I don't. Uh, kill I'm gonna jump on that train. I don't kill any flies in my house because Jade. Kills them. That's the only reason she gets Jade exercise. Jade kills flies? Yes. She's seven inches tall. Does she kill the ones that are above her? She waits for them to come down. And they always do. And she kills them? She Yeah, she, she, she bites them and then they're on the ground and she sniffs them. And I think she eats them when I'm not looking. How? How reliable is she? Because if we could work together. I'll rent her out to you. I'll go for the high, she'll go for the low. Yeah, y'all could be a. No flies can escape us. You'd be an exterminating Doggy man duo. We're gonna talk about board games, but we do want to remind you, if you watch GMM, you know about this already, votelikeabeast.com. This is a website that we put together because we are really trying to motivate people to take part in the election this year. Yeah, I've, you know, it's, I, I remember back when we were. Um, Lads. When we were at Bowie's Creek Elementary School, I guess we were in eighth grade, We could. it was the, it was the Clinton, it was when Clinton won the presidential 92, election. 92, that would have been. Uh, so yeah. Clinton Bush. That would have been a freshman hold year. On, was it, who did he run against? Yeah, it was Bush going for his second term. Yeah, yeah. Um, the first Bush. Yeah, Herbert Walker. And uh, I remember being really into that. Like all the kids in the school voted. Yeah, the school-wide election. School-wide election, that, it was very exciting. And I don't, and I, I don't remember it being that heated either. It was just fun. You know, it's like, this is not fun. But for the first time since that election, I actually feel like, oh my gosh, this matters. Now, of course, I've I voted. For the first time since 92. <laughs> the, <laughs> this is Link's not been really been paying attention. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, you know that elections matter, and you, but it's very palpable to me this time around. Hmm. And there's there's just a level of urgency that I, I haven't felt before. Well, I and, think a lot and, of people and you know what? will say that because. Uh, and get, I don't think that's true, but but that is no, part no, of my. No, no, I think, no, I think th you think about how much political discourse. Well, let me clarify what I think is was true. I think all elections are, are important. extremely yeah. important. That's what, I, that's what I mean. But there is something about this election for me personally that I'm, the most engaged I've ever been. And, and I think I you want speak for a lot of people. What, what I'm getting at is the reason you speak for a lot of people is because m many people who didn't care at all about politics, and I'm not saying you didn't care at all about politics, but you're not really 
a politically motivated person. Right. But a lot of people who are in that boat have seen what's happened in our country over the past four years and how think about how much we talk about the president in a way that we've never talked about a president, right? We, 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 the news is so dominated by political discourse. We're even more polarized than we were four years ago. Like, and so a lot of people are like, ah, I guess I'm gonna be a part of this process. And yeah, we, we and, feel the same thing. And on Good Mythical Morning, there are certain, you know, we don't get political on the show um, by and large. You know, it's like we try, we try to preserve that space to be an escape from, um, I don't know. You get that example, a lot of places. Like yeah. it, it, if, if you find yourself witnessing or being a part of like a Twitter war or some sort of ugly back and forth on Facebook and you know, we don't wanna bring that into Good Mythical Morning. You know, I don't, I don't wanna bring that type of uh, energy into my life personally but we did want to do something to mobilize everyone to to vote. Yeah. And to to rem, to, to help make the each person's decision uh to enable their decision as much as possible whatever their decision may be. Voting like a beast it is go it goes beyond the really important first step which is just registering to vote and being ready to vote which is important. So you can do that at vote like a beast. But the sort of the next layer that we think is important is informing yourself, right? Because you as a citizen who is uh, eligible to vote, you, the most clear way that you can actually let your voice be heard according to the issues that you find important is by exercising your right to vote. And a lot of times people are just like, ah, my vote really doesn't count. It kind of gets lost in the mix. And uh, but the collect the collective or, power of our voice is in, is incredibly important. I mean, it's it, the collective uh, power of the vote consists of individual voters like you. And when you can make the connection between what you believe and what you find to be important and what you would like to see happen in your country to the candidates who have policies that they've laid out publicly. That makes you an informed voter. So the, 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 we have tools on the site that help make those connections. Profiles of candidates. We we link out to resources that we've kind of you know brought together, aggregated into one place to make you have the option of being an informed voter to the point where you can actually take a voter guide into the ballot box if you're voting in person, or you can have it right there when you're voting by mail, so you can make choices that are according to your interest and how you are informed about the issues. Right, so it's all in one place. We try to make it as simple as possible to empower you to vote according to your conscience. That's votelikeabeast.com. We invite you to check it out and um, share that with people. Um, it's nonpartisan. Go for it. Vote like a beast. Well, let's talk about the shirt that you're wearing. Uh, have you joined a softball team? Um, no. Have you ever thought about it? I'm open to anything now that involves like getting out and like playing with people. Whenever the time comes that I can do that again. Okay, softball it is. So it might be softball and I've, you know, I've got the shirt. The Mythical Softball Team. Join up now. You also can get a pennant, mythical.com. I think it's technically the so the baseball tee, but you know what, the rules are almost exactly the same. The balls are bigger. Balls are bigger. Hey, listen, you can pick a bigger ball, always do that. Softball over baseball. Mythical.com. Mythical.com, rep your boys when you're out there on the on the diamond. And bring the diamond with you wherever you go. Um, okay, so let's get into board games. We, you know, I, I wanted to talk about this because I'm, I'm on a journey, hmm. okay? Yeah. I know we're all on a journey, but I'd like to think that I am on a very specific and special yeah, everybody link, thinks link their, journey. Everybody thinks their journey is the most important one. That's what makes you human. And I've come to an intersection that involves board games. We talked about our vacations a few episodes back and uh, the one thing that I kept from you because it was so special to my heart and I didn't, you know, I just didn't know if I wanted to share it was, well, and really we ran out of time because I think we ended up talking about Probably reality TV. Yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> I'm sure it was. We 
are not a board game playing family, but Christy packed these board games I didn't even know we had. Wow. And I'm like, you know what? I saw a couple of board games and the first one that we ended up playing was Code Names. And the reason why is because we played Code Names. I learned Code Names at your house in your monthly game night, which is currently on COVID hiatus. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? This isn't a, I would not call that a board game. I call it a party game, okay? It, but I think I'm, I don't have the terminology right because I'm just a, beginning my There journey. is a board though. There is a, there is a board. For those of you who don't know how Code Names works, um, well, I can't explain it. You, it. It's a it's a verbal game where you're divided into two teams. So with our family, it was uh, Gracie was there with us, and so it was three against three. And um, I think she brought this game. Actually, I was like, oh, I love this game because but, it, it I, it's I, not a strategy game. It's a verbal game where you're like giving clues. I'll, I'll try to quickly explain the rules, and it probably won't mean anything to you. So I'll make it quick. But basically, you have a board in front of you that has a series of you, words on it. Yeah, you put cards down, and it's one word per card, and there's and they're in a mosaic. And and you are trying to get your team to guess the words that are associated with your team, and not guess the words that are associated with the other team. Your and team. the more that and and you can only give one word clues. And so you're trying to come up with, when it's your turn, and basically it, you have one person who is the clue giver for that round for the team, and you're trying to come up with one word that will connect as many of those words on the board that are your words. So if it was like. Saturn, space, and telescope, it, you might say astronomy, but if you had Saturn and space, and you and I are the clue givers for our opposite teams, I also know which, which words are yours. And, and if, if I had Venus. If Venus was yours, I can't, you know, I can't, I could say three astronomy and that means three of the words on the board could be associated with astronomy and then everyone on my team verbally processes and and it's kind of torturous to then give yeah. the clue and listen but it's very fun. I believe it to be. It's a great, I great believe game. it to be the best, it is the best game that we have played at game night. Yeah, it, it's good for a party. It's, there's not a lot of strategy involved um, there's a lot of interplay between all the players. So we started playing and there's that. there's Codenames Pictures as well, which is the same thing, but it's Oh, a um, sequel. You haven't played that? I have no. that as well. Oh, I never played that. It's the same exact thing, except it's pictures instead of words. The rules are exactly the same, and what you're trying to, in the way you're giving clues is exactly the same, but you're trying to get them to guess these pictures, and it's weird because it'll be like these weird symbolic sort of mosaic type symbol pictures uh-huh. that are open to interpretation. Open to interpretation, so you have to find oh, cool. what your partner and your team is thinking and it's, it's great. We were having a lot of fun and it was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I hoped our vacation would be. Our family is gathered around a table, we're playing a game together. And why do you and think it took vacation happy? to well, we don't break own, out the board games? We don't own code names. Um, and it, yeah, because I've, I've never, I've never enjoyed board games. I'll get into that more. So, but then, there were two nights of playing Code Names, and boy, every you know, everybody was into it. There was food. There was drink. There was music. There was Code Names. There was togetherness. Alcohol for the whole family. Uh, the whole family. <laughs> Jade was drunk off her hairy <laughs> ass. Um, and then I'm looking over there, and I'd seen this other game, and I was like, Catan. Mm-hmm. Or is it Catan? I think Catan is the correct pronunciation, but Catan is what. I was like, this is Settlers of Catan. Did you? Well, I didn't know we owned this, and it was a brand new was game. Was it junior or regular? Regular, and Christy had, Christy had bought this thing. And so the third morning, after the two nights of code names, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna open this up. It never been played, fresh out of the box. I was reading about it, I was like, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. Now. I had heard about this game, and I'm like, "This is this is not going to be for me. This is a strategy game. I've always hated strategy. I've never had a good experience with a strategy game. And again, we'll get we can. I'm curious about your past and your perspective, which I think is different than mine. But we can go into the reasons why. But I'm like, you know what? It was such a good experience. I want this quintessential strategy board game." 
and we should give it a shot. It, it's an intricate board. We gotta punt, we gotta pull everything out and set it up for the first time. Lando, even if he can't follow the game because he's 10 years old, he, he'll enjoy setting it up. Well, actually he did enjoy playing the game and followed just like anybody else or he was as good as me. And um, we had a great experience playing uh, what I would call Settlers of Catan, but the, how, the, how, the, how long did it, the box just says Catan. How, did, how long did it take? Um, because we were learning and they do a really good job of like, if you're just learning, you kind of skip ahead a little bit. They kind of prime the game a little bit for you so you have the momentum of the beginning. Have you ever played it? Yeah. I'd never ever played it, I'd only heard of it. And um, I think we, it was like an hour and a half, maybe, maybe almost two hours. And um, I loved it. The reason why I loved it was because, I mean, you're like, you're, you trade with people in order to like, you, to settle this land called Catan, Catan, who knows. I, we, we, we settled on it being Catan. That in the Neil house, we call it Catan. I think that's fine, I think that might be right. You I build roads, you build settlements, and then you turn them into cities, and then it's, you know you have to do it by like trading sheep for brick, and you're trading with people, and there's some strategy involved, but it's not too crazy. I mean, I had, we were, just as a flashback, when Chrissy and I were first married, before we started having kids, we were invited to a, a, a we had these friends as an older couple. They had some kids who were like middle schoolers. And they said, we want you to come over and play Risk with us. Mm -hmm. And it was like the worst night of my life. They were so into it. I didn't know how to play. And I I just don't, I was, at that night I concluded, you know what? I don't, I can't, I can't get this. It's very frustrating. It lasts forever. I just don't have a mind for strategy. I don't have a strategy mind. You know what, it's my shortcoming, I'm not gonna blame it on them, but they are really into it and it's a little bit alienating. And it, why is this taking forever? Let's just talk. Risk is its own is its own thing. I, we used to. Um, so just to complete my thought, I thought I would hate, I was like very proud of myself because here I am doing a strategy game and it seems like everybody's involved and I'm like, I'm actually following this. Turns out when I looked online to find other games like Catan that we could also play. It's categorized as a light strategy game. So that kind of. Yeah, there's not, not a lot to it. That, yeah, I, I, that I, notched down I my think, ego I a little bit. I think it's fun. Now, speaking of risk, because, you know, we used to play like me and my father in law, my brother in law, and like an assorted bunch you've ever happened to be around. Sometimes it was my wife's cousin that was there as well when they were in town would play these really intense, long games of Risk. And the thing about Risk is the games can last for hours, right? It's not, it's, it, it's, it's, I mean, we would sometimes go into these like three or four hour long games because it kept going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And everyone who was playing, like you think I'm competitive, I was, easily the least competitive in this group between my father-in-law, my brother-in-law, and my wife's cousin. As long as everybody's into it, that's great. No, but what would happen is, and this is what I wanna get back to asking you about, because this this maps onto like the way my family plays games. It would get, my bro, my father-in-law and my brother-in-law would sometimes, I was like, they're gonna, they're, they're gonna fight, they're finally gonna fight. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, like fist fight. Because it was so intense. You would get so <laughs> it would get so intense. And like you do these things that like with risk, you have the option of like, I'm gonna team up with, with this guy and we're gonna sabotage you and we're gonna take you out. And a lot of times we would do that to my father in law because he was the best at the game. He'd been playing for a long time. You know how he's so competitive. And so that that may nothing makes you angrier than if you get teamed up against, there's, nothing, right. there's little you can do. And I was always just kinda like a little bit like Switzerland. I didn't start in Switzerland, that's not a great strategy. Uh, but I, I'm i really competitive but I would just kinda play it, I, I was just like this is entertaining because they're so passionate about this. And, it's, and if you go to somebody who's like, they've got their strategy down, you can't just, in, like that couple did you a disservice by inviting you to, into a game that 
can be as intense as risk and not like picking up on your signals that you were not into it or that maybe we should like play it in a more, you know, inviting way. It reminds me of the story of when we, back in 19, oh, it was 2003 probably, when we were on our staff training to go on staff with Campus Crusade. Yeah, we went down to Florida, so we were there like taking seminary classes for a summer and then also Get ready being to be on staff. trained in like everything we were gonna do. And we became really good friends with uh, Eric and Natalie uh, who were from Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And with the, the six of us really g got along, right? We were all basically newlyweds, I would we say. We were newlyweds and, and we just, you know, th we, we all liked each other, right? Yeah. And so we connected with them probably more than anybody at staff training and we got into playing not a board game but a game, party game, catchphrase. And the reason why we play that, because by that point, Again, that was around the same time as the Risk incident and like in college, we would play Risk some. Like there were people who liked Risk and I was like, by the, I was became convinced that like none of this was for me, none of these board games, strategy games, but party games like catchphrase where it's like it's quick and it's verbal and it's it's fun and then it's over and you can basically end it at any time. You know, it's not this like you don't have to invest the whole night in it and then if it goes sideways or well, somebody gets upset. The learning curve is much lower. It's, it's simple. You sit down and you and you get it and then, but we. So I was, I was very into and still am very into something like catchphrase. And you know, we say this all the time, you don't think you're competitive, I think you're just as competitive as me. Uh, you just show it in a different way. But I think you hate to lose just as much as me. You're just better at keeping it to yourself. Now the, and you would get super, Super into. I don't know about that, but we can okay. come back to it. So we were we would start playing this, the six of us, and we would get so into it, like loud. We were at the what was it, the El Carib? Was that the the yeah. hotel that we it were was at? Like in Panama a, City a, apartment building. And I so, mean, everyone. Yeah, do we need to explain what catchphrase is? It's basically, it's hot potato, but like you, it's like password. There's a word you got to get people to guess, and you can't. Yeah. You can't say the word. Yeah, and if it stops in your hands, you lose. Um. So, we. There was this other couple that we didn't really know that well, but they were on uh, they they were going to go on staff with Athletes in Action, which is the Campus Crusade wing that ministers to athletes. Yeah, they were like a, and they had been college athletes, right? And so we were like, these people are competitive. They surely will be into how wild and crazy and intense our games of catchphrase get. We invited them over one night. Yeah. And uh, we're playing the game and we're doing our typical like yelling and like when somebody gets it wrong, everybody yells, when somebody gets it right, everybody yells. And I'm just kind of noticing this couple is shrinking. They're not really being loud at all. They're not, they don't seem like they have the will to win. And uh, I think we scarred them forever. They did not ask to come back. Um, and we didn't talk a whole lot after that. I, I think that the energy we had, it was like, it was just, it was fun to have energy. So, and I and We were playing guys maybe, against girls and I think one of the things that happens with me when I'm playing a game is I get, like I'll say things and you're like, is he mad? That's, he seems mad. And if you're the kind of person who that kind of energy. For ener comedic effect. That kind of energy. If you knew you. Well, no, I'm just, I'm really getting into it but the moment that like, we got to order a pizza. I'm like, what y'all want on the pizza? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not actually mad. I'm just really intensely competing. It's like when you're playing basketball with somebody and you're like talking trash to them, but then you're like, hey, let's let's leave in the same car. It's it's just part of the competitive spirit for me, right? Mm -hmm. But some people don't respond well to that, and they think, oh, these people must be mad at each other. And I think that that wasn't how they're, they were also newlyweds. I don't think that's how it worked for them. Whereas in our marriages, I feel like there was a lot of like, you know, you could be loud with your spouse and it didn't mean you were mad with them. I mean, that's definitely how me and Jesse are, you know. I think also when you and I were on a team, we could give clues that seemed impossible. Right, because we knew how we it's were thinking. Like we would speak in code and then it would be very frustrating. We were for tough to beat. We we're tough to beat when we we're on the same same team. Yes, yeah, so that was very that was hilarious to us, and very decimating and frustrating to. But so when you're playing to, to competitors, Catan they, as a they, family, they, they ended up just not coming around anymore. Right. 
so when you're playing Catan as a family, are you, it, it sounds to me, what, what I was picturing in my mind as you were talking about it isn't like this is, I want to win and that's the main thing I'm thinking about. It was more, I'm having a great time with my family. That's what I was feeling. Um, Lincoln is pretty competitive and he's a very strategic thinker. I don't get that competitive you know? directly with, I mean, I get competitive for the sake of uh, like entertaining myself and my fa family, but like not in the same way that on game night, like I want to win and it becomes personal. With my family, it's like, if Shepard wins this game, that's yeah. awesome for him. So I'm yeah. not gonna try to like take him out. I, well, I actually won. But I, I wasn't like I wasn't like gloating or anything. I was actually surprised because I Lincoln started he 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 built all of his cities in this one place where like with odds are he would end up getting all these bricks. He became he was talking all this smack about how he was a brick factory. Oh, I got so much brick. If anybody wants any brick, you got to come to me. You know <laughs> that became fun when it was just like you start to play a role in the game of like you're the brick mogul. And then, you know, people think he he's doing so well because he's got so much brick that nobody wants to trade with him. And then he gets frustrated. And that's 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 that was fun. It's fun to watch him get frustrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it um we were all we're all doing the same thing and having a good time. You know, so then I'm coming I'm like, this is a new this is a new era. I think I think we can do this. At the beginning of uh, quarantine, I was thinking, you know what? It's puzzle time, it's game time. And on the Mythical Society, we were doing this thing early on where um, all the Mythical crew members were making videos from home about like how, what they were doing during quarantine and making uh, suggestions about things that um, you could also enjoy while, while being isolated in quarantine. And uh, Caleb, our graphic designer, who uh, give him credit for most all of the merch st stuff that's designed. He does the vast majority of that. I, I happened to be watching one of his videos on the society and he started talking about board games and he talked about this one game called Parks. And the way he talked about it, it was, it was, it was a strategy game where you go through, where you make your way through all the national parks. And I'm like, my dream is to like, be the dad who goes to all the national parks with my family. While never leaving my living room. So now we can do that here. And it's like the artwork looked really cool. And then it was, ended up I couldn't get one. I had to, they have a Kickstarter campaign for an expansion and I, I ordered that. I still haven't gotten it. But I was like, you know what? We're gonna get this parks game and this is gonna be the new family thing. Has it happened, but I do, that's, that's the next thing I'm excited about. We come back from the beach and I'm like, all right, every Sunday, that's gonna be our game time. And so you know me, I'm like, I'm excited about Catan, that's what we're gonna play. And I thought everybody else would be excited. This is the new Neil thing, tabletop gaming. And then Lily's like, I don't wanna play that. That game's stupid. I was like, it wasn't stupid. <laughs> it wasn't stupid two days ago. She's like, sheep and bricks and uh, it's not yeah, for me. You, you ran into a teenage mentality. Yeah, I'm like, you just made me so mad. I was like, well, we're gonna play a game. Mm. And we ended up playing the star. We had a Star Wars version of Clue, <laughs> which that we didn't even finish. Mm, yeah. I was like, look at what happened. Fizzled out. Fizzled out. You know. And then Lincoln's a few. The next weekend, Lincoln's like. We should play Among Us. I'm like, tabletop gaming? He was like, no, nah, we, we each need to be on our phones. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a video game on your phone that you, you play, it's fun with five people, but you can't talk to each other. And even though we're in the same room, you gotta act like we're like in different rooms. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, yeah. And I'm like, seriously? I, was, I told Lily, I was like, if we play Clue, next time we are gonna go back to Catan, Catan and we're gonna like it. We are that's going to like it. That's the dad spirit. And then it, we didn't Force get back. Your so kids now, to so like now we're something. playing Among Us, which is actually a pretty, it's, it's a very fun it, game. Is it one of those games where like you're all looking at the television, like uh, those trivia games where you're on your phone? You're all looking at this this um, spaceship schematic and you're running around and um, 
you're a crew member, but then one person is an imposter and he's sabotaging everything on the ship and killing people. And then you have to, um, if you're a crew member, and it, every time you play the game, you're randomly assigned. You have to perform tasks to like run around the ship and, and do things. But if you're the imposter, you have to act like you're doing things, but then when you're alone with somebody, you have to kill them. And then when you, when, an, when a crew member finds someone dead, they have to report dead body and then everybody comes together and you discuss, like you actually can talk at that point about who you think the imposter is. So it's got like a mafia werewolf kind of vibe, I think. Yeah. But it's mostly in, in this gaming world. Of course, I'm so freaking oblivious to how to play a video game that they're just laughing at me the whole time and then ultimately getting angry at me because I don't know what a dead body looks like and I don't know how to I don't know how to move around. They're like, he was standing still for a really long time. He must have been he must be the 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 killer. It's like, no, I don't know how to move. It's like I don't know how to move. Yeah, I got stuck. <laughs> so we quickly moved. Somehow my family has taken us away from our new identity as a board gaming family back into like our own phone zone. Well, but I think you, this is still a victory to be celebrated, yes. right? Because first of all, the distinction between board games and party games is one that. And video games? Blurring? No, I'm just saying that when it comes to what it is that you're trying to accomplish, which is doing something, I'm not gonna say not on screens because that is on screens, but doing something together that's fun as a family, creating family memories. The distinction between the board games and party games, it doesn't matter, yeah, I, right? I, I was happy that most everybody was willing to play that game at um, least three times until it was like somebody was like, I don't wanna do this anymore. Well, the thing, I'm going to my room, you can't go to your room. The thing that you're this always dealing time. with when it comes to teenagers uh, is, is them being on their phones and them being in contact with their friends, girlfriends, whatever, whatever the, the people that they stay in contact with. Uh, their attention spans are really short and it's very difficult for them to unplug from being in contact, right? So, and also just their attention spans are short in general. I mean, you know, we watch a lot of movies and I try to introduce the kids to, you know, movies that I grew up with and, uh, you know, Locke and I watch horror movies together and now we've kind of gotten, you know, he's 16 now, now we're, we're watching some, uh, some of the movies from my list of my favorite movies that mm -hmm. he, I wouldn't let him watch up until now. And when you get, when you're looking at a total running time of like two and a half, three hours for some of these movies, yeah. that is a lifetime for a teenager these days. Yeah, my, I've, I, told, I told my kids, I'm like, you don't know how to watch a movie. You can't do it. Well, but you, you know. You can what, watch a show. Well, but what they'll do is they will binge a television show and yeah, they'll like sit down six and hours. they'll sit down for five or six hours and watch a whole season of a television show. But the feeling of them having some sort of control of them being able to like take a break between episodes because it's naturally broken up. That I mean, that's why in theory, in theory, I know Quibi did, did had a had a really bad launch, but like something like Quibi made a lot of sense on paper because it was it was a it was designed for mobile. I watched a couple of shows on there and like the whole like flipping to vertical and the way that that actually changed the interact it changed it in a way that was cooler than I expected it to be. Uh, but also the fact that you know, depending on the show, it's like this is broken up into bite-sized pieces but it's telling a longer story. I mean, I didn't get into any of the content, but I only tried a couple of things. But in theory, it made sense. It's like, let's go mobile, let's have a bias towards vertical, let's make it into bite-sized pieces that I don't understand. It just, it, they, they got a bunch of great talent to be in the shows and to make the shows. Mm -hmm. all, it's, all that to say is what I've observed is that the thing that you're battling is the teenage attention span. Yeah, And I, so board wait, games I can't even get, fit right into I can't even that. get a kid to watch a movie with me. Yeah. We just watch, we're just like, I'll say, hey, let's let's watch a movie. And they're like, eh. I'm like, okay, well, let's watch a show. And they're like, all right. Well, and it's like, you know, Locke it's will. It's like, the, the, he'll, they'll commit, they'll commit to like 
40 minutes or 60 minutes with me and that I take it personally. It's like, that's all you can take of me and then once that's over, it's like, I'm gonna go back in my room in and order watch to watch something, watch else. something else without me. But the thing that Locke will do is he and his friends will, be, he, 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 like, he texted me the other night is, uh, with a friend and he was like, Dad, what was the name of that movie that we watched where this and that happened? I was like, sent, sent him the text. I was like, it was this. And then I, I pick him up and uh, he's like, I'm like, hey, did you you watch that movie? Did you enjoy it? He says, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and I like asked him about a part. He's like, we we didn't finish it. Didn't finish. We didn't finish it. I'm like, what? You didn't finish the movie? I don't understand how the teenage brain works. And it wasn't because it was just like, yeah, it, the night was over or whatever. And it's like we'll watch the rest of it later. No. It's like I it, that, that again I in 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 theory the quippy thing makes sense. It seems like it was the answer to that. But it just didn't it hasn't worked yet. I I feel like it still will at some point. I don't know. I mean Whoa, just hey, I just went down. <laughs> my uh like we we've been rewatching and this is Lily's idea, rewatching all the Marvel movies. She's a huge Marvel fan. And I was like, this is good. I like a game plan. The Neils are watching all the Marvel movies. We went through all the Lord of the Rings and you know, we're we're watching Survivor and we're watching the Lord of the Rings behind the scenes. Like we have different things that are ongoing. And I right. that is a an appeal of series. And then she kind of applied that to Marvel movies. So then it's like we're going to watch all of these. She's so into them. But I'm like, "Girl, you got to graduate's not the right word, but it is what I kind of feel like. I'm a huge fan of all the Marvel movies. I love watching them, but there's something you know. You gotta, you gotta watch like good movies it's too. Not, it's not what you would. You gotta graduate call classic cinema. Uh, yeah, cinematically to some more artistic approaches to things. You know, it's like yeah. Well, the, and I I feel like I broke that seal. I told you that Locke and I watched Pulp Fiction. Mm -hmm. It was like. He kept leaning over because I, I remember for, I watched it when we were in college, um, and I, we remember we talked about this on the show when we talked about yeah, it, it was being our, our number favorite one movie, movie and the way it like transformed what we thought was possible with did, a movie. So did he he was into it. He kept turning to me and he was just like, "God!" Like making those faces and saying these things like, "This is so great!" Like the very beginning when they're having that conversation about the Royale with cheese, like he just got this smile on his face. I was like, yes, he's he 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 understands. He understands why this is good. Um, and since then yeah. he's, you know, he, we've been watching a bunch of movies in, 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 from that time in my life. But um, but still, e even when, if, it, if, if, you know, Friday night, Saturday night rolls around and he's at home, uh, you know, I, he doesn't want to be with you on a couch for three hours. If yeah, even though I've introduced him to these great movies, it still is this thing that's like it's there's the threshold to overcome to get them to be like, ah, yeah, I want to, I want to sit down and devote my evening to this. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. To I overcome. was like, let's watch a movie. You know, tonight we're gonna watch a movie. We're going to watch a movie. Lando's not here. Lando was at your house for Shepard's birthday. Just the two of them. And they watched a movie. And I was like, we can watch a movie that Lando can't watch. We're gonna watch The Revenant. Mm. Leonardo DiCaprio Ooh, is- that's one on the list for me. It's amazing. Life. This was, it's, you know, and um, they were a little reticent, but I'm like, this is happening. It's a good movie, you're gonna like it. You know, it, it's not too long into it that there's the, there's the, the bear attack. The bear scene. And, um, Lily like stands up and I, I honestly, Ooh. I had forgotten how traumatic, <laughs> <laughs> I mean how real yeah. this and relentless. Yeah, I mean I wouldn't call it a bear attack, I would call it three bear attacks. I don't know if you remember, we saw it in the theater and that was the only time I'd seen it. Uh, the bear attacks the dude three different times. <laughs> and, and after the first time you're like, oh my gosh, I just don't feel like I can keep watching this. Mm -hmm. I can't. I don't know if I can take this. This is so intense. And so Lily was like, "I can't watch this." And you know what? She was like, You're "Like sit down and watch this guy get maimed." <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Well, listen." I was like, "But I was like, you, 
you loved us. You like you watch all these, you watch stuff that's just as intense. Like there was, I mean, that was real and scary, but it, yeah, it was and a, gory and gory. But so was us. Us was in, very scary. Yeah, no, I'm and saying very yeah, gory. us is gory. Yeah. And she's like, turns out it was it was the intensity of it, but it was also I did. And she's inching her way to the door now, and she's like, I just don't want to watch two guys chase themselves around, chase ar- around each other on the wilderness. You know, chase themselves around the wilderness. Mm. I can't even put the sentence together, but right. you know what I'm saying. Chase away to the wilderness. I'm like, well, I'm losing this battle. But then yeah. Christy and, and, and Lincoln watched it with me. And I think um, Lincoln was like, Listen, that was a good movie. He watched the whole thing. We watched the whole thing. It's a long movie. Yeah. Very, very, it's a good movie. Cinematically, I mean. Yeah, the, yeah, we wanna, we wanna watch that one together. Pretty mind blowing. But, but it's very intense. To, to get back in to, number of places, to games, visceral. Though. To get back to games for a second. We're gonna play Catan again this weekend. I'm, I'm getting back on that horse. Now you talked about how you didn't think you would be into strategy games. Now for the longest time, I've always just thought, man, I, it makes sense that you would be into strategy games and board games because there's rules and there's a system and like yeah. once you once you learn it, and execute it, there are specific results. It, se- it seems to tie into your oneness on the yeah, but Enneagram. The, I, I, I've not had a lot of experience and I think I was thrown in the deep end. I have never played Monopoly. I've never played it. We, we have that as, as and my, a uh, I told a Lily that and Lily was like, Dad, who are you? I mean, how does this happen? I'm like, I was an only child. Like I didn't play, I didn't have a family, I had a mom. Like me and mom aren't gonna sit down and play Monopoly. You can't play with just two people. But my, th- this is this is what's always perplexing to me and I, is that. And I didn't watch movies with Most of the time. I, you know, I no, was just. No, but I didn't, but here's the thing. I played Monopoly as a kid, right? But I ne- my p- family did not play board games. Who did you play Monopoly with? It would just be like in the time between I was zero and 18, right? And somewhere in at childhood, some point, yeah. it'd be like you're at a, someone's home or you're at like your cousin's house or somebody yeah. has Monopoly and you play it. it my kids, I did, it seems my like kids have played it. I didn't seek these things out. They sought me out. I feel like you were purposely avoiding them. It, it has it to was, be that there was an opportunity and you were like, ah, it's not for me. Has to I be. I think I was in. Anything strategy or taking a long time, I think it was how my kids feel about movies. I felt about these games. It's like you gotta learn a lot, you gotta like think hard, and you can't let up. Like it just seems exhausting. I'll play Connect Four. I and and listen, the McLaughlins. The 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 issue with the McLaughlins is attention span, and also adhering to a system. Or rules. It's very difficult because, you know, I it, I am by far the most system oriented person in my family, mm-hmm. and on the spectrum of people, I'm I, I'm 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 somewhere in the middle probably, in terms of like how much system there is in my life, right? But in my family, I'm on the extreme, and so. Like rules and systems and having to do things in a certain way mixed with really competitive people who don't like to lose, all of us, all four of us, is a, it can make for an incredible time or it can make for like an, it, somebody's gonna cry, there's gonna be some explosiveness that happens. You know, I've seen it on Shepard's face a, a number of times. You know, when you're the youngest one and you're the youngest one by five years, you know, uh, up until pretty recently, it was like he just doesn't have the faculties to be super competitive in some of these games, right? Yeah, whatever we might be playing, and so you could see that, like, when he makes a mistake, that um, oh, there it is, he just lost the game. He just made a critical mistake. You get this look on his face, like I've blown it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like he wants to win so bad, and it's just like it's only. And this is a flaw. This is something that I've had to. I continue to work on is like, are you having fun if you don't win, right? Super competitive people have trouble having fun if they don't, if they're not winning. It's, or if they're doing something and they and they're like, I'm not good at this. 
and I don't think I'm gonna be able to be good enough at this to be competitive in it. I, so I'm gonna lose interest. And so those are the kind of the factors, but I think the fact that everybody wants to win ultimately is how you get people roped into games in my family. But we started quarantine with games and that they've completely fallen off. Like we were playing Scrabble. I mean, we were scrabbling it up. Yeah, I've never played Scrabble. Again, that's that's odd to me that you I haven't know, run across a Scrabble, just a Scrabble board somewhere on the street that you just found yourself playing on. I get it. I mean, like grandparents would n- never played games. Like I don't recall. I mean, like as well, you and I, we would never play games. Well, it, like I said, we didn't have games in my yeah, house. Yeah, I mean, up. we didn't have Scrabble. I played Scrabble for probably the first time as an adult because. Jesse's parents had it. And they're like, let's sit down and play Scrabble. And I'm like, all right, I know words. Mm-hmm. Apparently not nearly as many as Jesse's mom. I don't think that I am, yeah, I, well, it, it's not really about am I competitive or not. There's also a second factor along with that that's like the group dynamic. Yeah, right? trying to set the scene for a family well, memory. Well, I'm saying, yes, I'm, I think I'm most interested in that with family my family and and none of us are that competitive. Like nobody gets that upset about winning or losing or anything. And at least at this point, maybe we'll get more competitive, but it but but we'll be on that journey together. I think that I was turned off by being in environments where people were a lot more competitive and then you just start to feel stupid. It's kind of embarrassing. Like it's a it's a bad feeling when people are know how to play something like Shepard's experience, I think that was part of my experience. I'm like, ah, I don't I don't want to have that. I don't want to look like a dummy in front of everybody who's played Monopoly their whole life. So it's like, I'm not, you know. So, and then that might come out as I'm not competitive. So again, I, I can't even tell. Like, I actually don't. Well, there is a difference because with Shepard, what he'll want to do is he'll want to play, let, let's start over or let's play tomorrow night. So he doesn't he doesn't be like, okay, I don't wanna play this game again because I lost. He's like, I wanna play this game again because I lost. But I don't think, but, so I'm, I'm trying to set the stage for, I actually don't think I'm competitive. You think I'm competitive, I think I don't, I think there's something that you're interpreting as I'm deep down competitive, but I think I'm interested in something different. Like I think, not looking stupid. I or, think when, the st- when the when the stage is set, right? And we're doing something that you feel confident in, like you're like, like I could I, win. I understand this game and I have reason to believe that I am just as good or better at the people that I'm playing against. I think when the when the setting is right, when the circumstances are right, you want to win as much as I want to win. I think the difference is is that if I enter a situation and I'm not good at something, I have to really resist the urge to like, okay, with poker for instance, like, you know, I started playing poker with my with my wife's family a long time ago, like early in our marriage. And like it got competitive really quickly and I'm like, if I'm going to have a chance of winning at this, I gotta, I, I, I gotta understand it. So I went and got all these books about poker and like read all these strategy about poker because it was, instead of like, you know what, when you guys play poker, I'm not gonna be a part of it, which is what you might do, I'm just like, yeah, which it was probably ultimately more healthy because I'm just wasting time learning how to play poker, into one sense, I'm not gonna be like a professional poker player, but I, but then I'm like, and I've even, even like within the past couple of years, I'll find myself thinking like, I need to get a book on chess because I've never really gotten good at chess. Well, no, I don't, I don't actually. I mean, maybe if I want to, and I think it would be fun to learn, but not just so I could have an, like beat somebody at chess. But I don't, I've just observed, like even the games we play on GMM, uh, like the the the, the guessing, the, the, the countdown game, the you only, get super competitive in that game because. I believe I have a chance. Yeah, because you're really good at that game. Or like the putt putt game, I'm like, hey, this is a new one, you know. I don't have to lose every time. But then right. at a certain point, with like, I lose this dart game every time. It's like, well, 
That's kind of frustrating because I feel like I do try on that one. I'm not great at aim, but <laughs> but yeah, it's like I. And there, well, I, I think and there's, we're, there's I think nothing we're wrong adding, with that. There's nothing. No, I think we're adding, to be ashamed. I think of. we're at extremes because I think that the thing that could be wrong with it is not willing to try something and get better at something in order to enjoy. Like the competition part of it is. I mean, you, if you can only point to one example or two examples on the show, given all the things we compete against, it's just, it's just not the thing I'm most interested in. So I don't think I'm not com- I'm certainly not competitive to the same level that you are because I'm not I'm not interested in winning. I think what I'm getting at is once once the circumstances are set and you're committed to the game I can see in your eyes that you want to win. But that is it, very rare. I think it takes a lot for the circumstances to to be to be right. I'm just saying in those moments and so, so, but yeah, some, but I am generally not competitive. But there, but like no, but, sports, uh uh-uh. uh. But there are people, like games, uh uh-uh. uh. But there are people who, okay, catchphrase. You are super competitive in catchphrase. I think it's, I think it's. And there are people who aren't. I think you're misinterpreting that. I think it's fun to be really into it, like the theatricality of it, but I don't really care if I win or lose. Like, a lot of times when I play catchphrase, I'll like, I'll give clues in a very weird way because I just think it's fun. And it, and because it, there's, a, there's a timer, I'm like, and it's gonna go, I don't, bl- I'm but early on. But there's also strategy in that. I'm early. Uh, doing weird clues early on in the clock is that there's a strategy because then you give it to the next person and there's less time. And then they get frustrated and it's funny to watch them get upset, but it's not about winning or losing. It's just about the social dynamics I've, are amusing, I guess are what I'm saying is to me. I've known people who I would say are truly not competitive. Like you can tell that they really, at no point do they get engaged to the to the point where they would actually really want to win. It's like, who? Ca- I don't, and I just, I'm saying that, okay, I, I will definitely concede that you're not I, as competitive think, as me, but you're more competitive than you give yourself credit. I think I'm adaptable to, sometimes when people are competitive and that's how they're having a good time, like, it's not fun to be, it's a killjoy to not participate. And the way you participate, yeah, because you're competitive, I think you're misinterpreting me as being competitive when I'm just being, playful. Like I'm actually like, I'm here to play. I'm here, I don't, I want to contribute to the fun that's being had and the climate is competition. But I personally am not driven, I'm driven by having a good time. And I don't, and I know I have one, I can either be competitive and that will be fun for everybody or I'll be the person who's who's not and then it's, it, it, it's a Debbie Downer, it destroys it. So when you do something well, and don't think about, I think you're also isolating it to games, but like anything well, any, anything that you do in your career, like I'm trying to do this well. I'm trying to be a certain way about this. I'm trying to create this piece of, I, I guess my definition of com- competition is just w- much wider as well. Okay. Because so, what I'm saying is, I mean, th- there's definitely- I, I feel like competitiveness is what is one of the elements that has gotten us to where we're at in our career. Like, and it is, I don't mean like, ooh, I wanna get more views than this other channel. I mean, sometimes it might come down to that, but it's not really that. It's more like I'm competing against myself. Like, ultimately everybody wants to be important in some way, right? And people who are in entertainment kind of achieve that and find their purpose a lot of times in, you know, eliciting a reaction from people. And I would say that you are actually even more focused and committed to getting a reaction from a crowd or from a from an individual than I am. You think about like the way that you're super. You know, I'm much I'm much less concerned about things like where is this thing and where is the camera and am I showing? Am I opening this box in the right way? In my mind, that's all competitive nature. It's like that you have a commitment to excellence and you may you're you're thinking about competitiveness in the in, in like I'm throwing a ball faster than a person or not. 
but like you actually care about that stuff more than I do. And I, and I would call that sort of, pers- I would almost say it's a relentless pursuit of doing things in a certain way. Perfection is not, I mean, is, I, a, is, I interpret is that attained as, by compa- comparison to like a standard. Yes. So, but I think it's a stretch to say that that's competition. Like I'm competing against a standard. Now, I also think it's, I, th- I think it's a little muddied by, I don't know, I, do, you, do you get from me in this conversation that like I judge you for being competitive? Yes. Okay, so we're breaking in. Kiko, I don't envy what the decisions you've had to make in editing this, but um, apparently Kiko has decided that what you just heard was like the truncated point and the end of this episode. And and the reason being. And then next week you'll get the the continuation for over an hour of the rest of our conversation which like veer deep into introspection and arguments and an apology. I, I'm sensationalizing because I I really do want you. It got I, very I want deep. Him, I want him to listen to this the, to part two, but and you know because I I think it's um I'm gonna be thinking a lot about it just to set the stage because you're gonna have to wait a week to to listen to it. So as you know, we were talking about board games. <laughs> Uh, and I and I've talked about this many times. I've talked about my theory that Link is just as competitive as me in quotes, um, and that led to a conversation. And I've never liked it when you said that, and I I don't know exactly why. About uh, it, boy, it got very. It just got very deep. It got very personal and very vulnerable from both sides. Um, and we ended up talking about the dynamics of our friendship and our creative partnership and how we think differently about it and what we how we think the same about it. And I just didn't want that conversation to get buried at the end of a com- of an entire episode about something else. About board games and movies and our kids and so yeah. that, so you may be frustrated with us that we're making you wait Another week for it, but we 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 poured a lot of ourselves into it, and I don't want it to get buried. And and, and not to be competitive, but if you're frustrated, you can direct your frustration at Link because uh, that it, this was his idea. But <laughs> I, I don't I don't like having a two and a half hour podcast when it's like I believe know, this is the right choice, actually. And it and and it 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 puts something front and center that we want it, the most people to listen to and and not lose heart before they get to it and it allows us to not have to sit down and record another episode um, which is always good you know so it's a it's it's a win-win um, so stay tuned to next week for that but for now use hashtag your biscuits let us know about <laughs> board <laughs> games I mean we we've just finished having the part of the conversation you're going to next week so it's like this is so I think we said some strange. good things about board games. Um, yeah, and uh, is it Catan or Catan? You could you could tell us about that. Uh, you know, I'm sure you would like to recommend board games to us, or any type of family oriented games that that we could continue to borrow. Or non family, just ones where you put the kids to bed and things get dirty. Those are good games too. <laughs> Hashtag ear biscuits, and we will speak at you next week, which will be the continuation. But we're about to record an intro for that that makes sense of it. Yeah. So there's lots of different pieces. Let's do that now. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.